Hey there guys, this is Mr. Green. In this lesson, we're going to look at sequences in series. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. There are two types, arithmetic and geometric. Here's an example of each, and formulas to find the nth term of each. In this first example, we want to find the, nth, the ninth term of this sequence, whose terms differ by a common factor of four. So the sequence is geometric. And to find the ninth term, we'll use our nth term formula. Let's substitute 9 for n, 3 for a sub 1, 4 for r, and now we're ready to simplify. 9 minus 1 is 8, and 4 to the 8th power is 65,000. 536. So the ninth term of this sequence is 196,608. Okay, let's move on and talk about series. A series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. You could have a finite arithmetic series or a finite geometric series. And here are formulas to find the sum of each type. In this next example, we have a sequence that has eight terms, and we want to evaluate the related series. So let's write out what the series will look like. To find the terms in between 21 and 61, we can use the common difference, which is 13 minus 5, or 8. If we add 8 to 21, we get 29 plus another 8 is 37, plus 8 is 45, and 53 is the last term between 21 and 61. Now to evaluate this series, let's use the formula for S sub n. The value of n here is 8, a sub 1 is 5, and a sub n is 61. So we can simplify this to 4 times 66, which equals 264. So 264 is the sum of our series. Let's wrap things up now by talking about infinite geometric series. There are two types. One where the absolute value of r is less than 1. We say that kind of series converges to the sum s. And here's the formula to find s. The other type is where the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. That type of series diverges and has no sum. So in this example, we want to find the sum of each series if possible. For the first series, we can find the common ratio by dividing 8 by 4. And that gives us 2. So since the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, the series diverges and has no sum. For letter B, again we can find R by dividing one-fifth by one. That gives us one-fifth. So the absolute value of R is less than one. We can find S by using our formula where A sub one is one and R is one-fifth. So this gives us one divided by four-fifths, which equals five-fourths for the sum. And that wraps up this lesson. Great job, and good luck on the rest of your homework. You can get more Algebra 2 help by signing up for Nutshell Math. I'll see you next time.